Check the description for the following discount codes. Previously, I've only done budget entry level projector reviews similar to this Abyss projector you see here, falling into the sort of 150 to 225 pound range. This Nomadic P1000 is priced pre-discount in the UK at 1500 pounds. So that is a big step up in price, but it's still not high-end projector money um, or, or good projector money. A good 4K projector, 4,000 pounds, 5,000 pounds. And obviously you can pay silly money if you really want to go that far. This is a 4K projector. It's also um, HDR and the specs I'll read off the website here just to get it right. 4K UHD resolution, 2300 ANSI lumens. And this is quite a bold claim because to put that in perspective, one of these, about 350 ANSI lumens. And in my testing, whilst this is noticeably brighter than say that cheaper abyss, I can't say that it, I haven't got the tool to measure the brightness. I can't say that it is that bright, 2,300 ANSI lumens. Um, I mean, as I say, I haven't got the equipment to test it, but in a dark room with the lights off at night time, curtains closed anyway, it is brighter and more vivid. And the, over, the overall experience with this is good. But before we sort of go into the, the nitty gritty of it all, the image is by far sharper than the 1080p projectors that I've tested. The edge-to-edge -edge clarity is by far better. The edge-to-edge -edge uniformity of the colors is by far the best I've seen in these sort of, this is now what I call a mid-range projector. The audio quality is Harman Kardon is the best I've heard. And the sort of noise from the fan inside is the lowest I've heard. So the overall experience is really good. The, the remote control input through the menus are snappy. The remote lights up, you won't be able to tell because I have a light obviously lighting me up right now. But when you pick this up, they light up. So if you're using it in a dark environment, which you should be with a projector, you can still see the buttons on your remote. Um, the user interface is easy to use and clear and makes sense. And you'll see footage of this all later. So the overall experience is good. I can't say the brightness is as claimed, and I'm a little speculative about the resolution. Um, you'll see why. In fact, I'll put the photograph up now. So what you see on the screen now is two photographs. I took one of my television, which should be obvious which one that is, and one of the projector. And you can see the pixels because I've got close enough to be able to, you know, have them show up in the image. Now the projector does look to be lower resolution, or at least the image appears more jagged, might be the better way to describe it. I don't want to say it isn't 4K, because sometimes when I'm looking at this image and I'm, I'm zooming in, I'm counting the pixels, I'm like, no, I'm sure it's the same number of pixels as there is on my TV, like, you know, counting between the legs of a, a letter or a number, just trying to figure it out. So it's just, for whatever reason, this, these pictures were taken um, during the daylight footage, by the way. What I then did, I thought, oh, maybe it'll be easier to take the picture when it's actually dark and the, the sort of gap between the pixels will be easier to see. And I'll be able to count them accurately and be 100% sure you know, what the resolution is. Windows does report it as 4K. Windows does report it as um, HDR compatible. So as far as you could, you know, all intents and purposes, it should be fine. But I was just like, that looks way more jagged than I'm expecting for a 4K resolution. Anyway, I took this picture when I was doing my nighttime footage recording, and now you can't really see any pixels. And they're all, it's all kind of like, it's like anti-aliased almost. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe it's something to do with the way ambient light reflects off the surface you're projecting on during the day. I honestly don't know, but it looks much better at night than it did during the day from a sharpness point of view. And obviously, what, you know, what we're looking at on this photograph and the last one is not what you would do. You know, I was only a few inches away from the projected image, just like I was taking the picture on the television. You don't sit that close to an 86 inch display, which is what we were using it at today 
to mirror my television. The other big selling point, apart from the resolution, the brightness, and hence the HDR support, is, and the audio, 12 watt Harman Kardon, which does sound nice, um, is the gaming marvel of 4.2 millisecond ultra low latency. It then says at 240 hertz. I'm not quite sure what it means by that. I don't know whether this is supposed to su support 240 hertz. Um, I didn't actually, well, no, because what? No, because we, the reason I didn't put 240 hertz through it is because Windows reported it as a 4K 60 hertz display. So that's all I could put into it. So I'm not sure why it says 4.2 milliseconds of ultra low latency at 240 hertz, but I have measured the latency and I'll put some footage up now of me doing it. I just had a timer on my television because my TV is about 10 millisecond input lag from button press to display change. Um, so I put a countdown timer up, mirrored on both screens, both straight out the graphics card, both over same length HDMI cables and the same brand of HDMI cable. So there's no variations there. And then I recorded this footage at 120 hertz, so 120 FPS. Um, and then I've slowed it down. And what I'm gonna do now is show you me just clicking one frame at a time back and forward as those numbers change. And what you'll see is that they both initiate the transition from one second to the next second at exactly the same time on the same frame, but that the projector actually gets cleanly to the next digit a few frames, maybe three or four frames, before the television does. Now that, that's probably just the off time or the, the time it takes for the pixels to turn off or to change because it is going from white to black so they will be going off on the TV. So the image hangs around a few frames a little, a little longer whilst it's transitioning. So what we're actually seeing here is a cleaner, sharper and quicker transition on the projector. So from a gaming point of view, the input latency, it says it's 4.2 milliseconds. I would say it's 10 because that's what my television is and it looks to be exactly the same from a response point of view. The time it then takes for the TV to fully transition is after the initial you know, input and the, and, the, and the change, so to speak. So the, the ultra low latency definitely works. So from a gaming point of view, this lives up to its claim 100%. And if you want games that are super input latency sensitive like Street Fighter where you're doing frame perfect timing or even old platform games, you know, not through, em well, it would have to be through emulation really, unless you're doing it on an original console because emulation adds latency, but let's say you've actually plugged an old games console in, or maybe you're playing some retro games, but they've been released on modern hardware. Um, you know, Nintendo do this particularly, you know, platforming needs precision timing. So a 10 millisecond, you know, input latency, very, very good. Projected is inherently a very slow. Something again like this, more in the sort of 50 to 80 milliseconds I've seen varying from projector to projector. So compared to the cheaper stuff, much better visual experience. Not 100% on the brightness. Colors seem well represented to me. In fact, I'm, going to, I'm about to start saying what I say in the footage. So I'm gonna stop rabbiting now, put up the daytime footage, first of all, just because people sometimes wanna know what it's like in the daytime if, if they wanna be able to use it. Um, and then I'll put up some nighttime footage and there'll be some footage of me going through the menus to show you those as well. So let's get all the footage up now. So this is our daytime testing because some of you will want to know can I use it in daylight cold does it have to be in a perfectly dark room this is daytime it is 2 p.m in the afternoon it's a reasonably sunny day outside there's a little bit of cloud but there's plenty of ambient light in this room we've got my tv there for a reference on the left hand side I'll explain why I'm doing that in a minute and of course the p1000 on the right you can see it's reasonably bright whether it is the claimed brightness or not I have no way of actually measuring, but it is bright enough and it is readable. The clarity, the Christmas, it isn't as sharp as the television. Obviously, these tests are not gonna be 
the best for any projector. They're not really designed to be used during the day, but people are going to want to know, is it usable coal? Does there have to be room, you know, does the room have to be pitch black or can I use it during the day? The reason I'm doing it beside a television also is because I've had people in the comments say, Carl, you should compare it to other projectors side by side. You know, not your TV. It's not a fair comparison. Well, the reason I do it beside my television is because if I do, if I chose a projector to do it side by side with, every one of you viewers would need to have that projector, that exact one, to be able to use it as a reference point. We all have a television of some sort. Yes, they do vary in quality, in brightness, in contrast ratio, in resolution, in size. You know, they do vary. But one thing they all have in common is that they are all visible in daylight. And the TV I'm using here is a three-year-old, it's a 2021 model, LG Nano cell. So it isn't an OLED. The blacks are not as black as they could be if it was an OLED panel. It is a three, probably almost four-year-old TV now. So it's more of an average example of a television. It's certainly not high end, it's just a relatively big screen. That's all, it's 86 inches. So we can all have some idea what a TV looks like in a front room during the day, you know, with daylight. And they're always watchable. I'm not talking about the sun shining directly on the screen, you know what I mean. So that's why I'm using a TV as a comparison because it gives you some idea compared to an average TV, how bright is this projector, how usable is it? Obviously, you're projecting onto a white wall or projector screen. So the blacks during the day are never gonna be close to even black, it's, it's, it's impossible. You know, the, the blackest a black can be on a projector is when there's no ambient light bouncing off of the TV, or the TV, sorry, the screen or the wall that you're projecting onto. Obviously during the day, we've got copious amounts of light bouncing off of, in my case, a white wall. If I had a white projector screen there, then it would be reflecting white light, you know, in just the same fashion. You can get um, projector screens that reject light reflections, but they are expensive, and this is a nearer budget sort of mid, well, it's a mid-range price projector. You could pay sort of four or five grand or you could pay 200 quid. This is somewhere sort of in the middle-ish. So, a couple of sort of demos here from LG, um, which is also what my TV is on the left. And then let's just demonstrate some Street Fighter, for example. For some gaming, some big screen gaming is what people are gonna be buying these for, you know, potentially sim racing and that's obviously what my channel is primarily for is it a good projector to use for some big screen sim racing that's a question we're going to be asking and is it a good projector overall now these clips i'm showing you here in the daytime i will show you again once it's night time with the lights off in the room so that you can get a more realistic experience of what it would be like to use this projector in more nominal settings rather than on a sunny day with the curtains open which is exactly what we've got now i'm not sure why the frame rate is a little choppy it's i think it must be the youtube video that i've chosen because this is just a youtube video of a street fighter plan i think it's a game spot video but um if it looks choppy on the video it's choppy here to my eyes as well um, I have no idea why that is. There's nothing to do with the projector though. But this is really just a demonstration of how it looks in the daytime. Colours, brightness, and of course, a complete lack of blacks. Anyway, that's enough of worst case scenario. Um, I'll do another clip in a second going through the menus, and then I'll do a clip at night time, which is a more sensible use case scenario for a projector. I've zoomed in on the menu screen here. I'm not gonna go through every single option because there are quite a lot in fairness. So I'm just gonna go through the main categories and you can see exactly what we've got in each one um, just to give you some idea of what you can do. But basically there is a fair amount of adjustability with this projector as far as you know the colors, the brightness, the contrast. You've got your usual focus and auto keystone and you've got energy saving features. 
Um, you've got test car patterns, splash screens, audio settings. Audio settings are slightly irritating because you can't, there's no, um, like user mode, you've got move, I'll just quickly show you this, but there's music, speech, or movie. For some reason, it doesn't want to go back to movie now. Why is that then? No, left and right. Speech, movie, music. Okay, there we go, it is. Um, the remote control is a Bluetooth remote. I think for some reason it, yeah, because it seems to be doing it every time now. But that's the three presets that you've got. There isn't actually a user-definable um, graphic EQ that I can find, which is a little bit irritating. Especially as we've got Harman Kardon speakers, or so it says on the spec. And in fairness, the sound does sound, for a projector, pretty decent. There isn't a huge amount of bass, but it is clear. And a lot of cheaper projectors really don't sound that clear. Um, the advanced settings, so again, it's, it's supposed to be 4K HDR. The PC does recognize it as an HDR capable device, so that's something. Um, ultra fast inputs, so, you know, there's a couple I am mentioning here. This is what would be your ultra low latency mode. It's either on or off. Now, currently it's on, and I'll show you that just by going to the sort of information tab here. It's also HDMI, color mode, TV, HDR, the resolution, the refresh rate. Um, software version, ultra fast input, active, right? Now, if I was to enable ultra fast input as if it wasn't on, let's just say I'm gonna do it now, I'm gonna press yes. It gives me a warning, or at least it should have given me a warning, telling me that it resets all the auto keystone correction. Oh yeah, here it is. If I, I don't know why I didn't do it before. If active, the warping keystone corner adjustment aspect ratio overscan zoom functions will be reset to default. You think, okay, no problem. So they reset to default and I can then adjust it afterwards to compensate, you know, for the wonky screen or, you know, image, whatever it is. The problem with that is you can't. The moment you go and adjust the keystone or the focus or anything like that, it no longer has the ultra fast input, the low latency input active. You see there it says active right now. If I was to actually go in and adjust, let's say adjust the keystone, because we haven't got it perfectly straight on the wall. So auto keystone is off, we, we leave it off, and we go to manual, and we go, okay, let's just adjust it. So I've adjusted it minus one. If we now come back out of that, go over to the information, our ultra fast input is now inactive. And it doesn't matter what you do, as soon as you adjust any of the settings that it warns you about, when you go to put it on here, if you go to adjust any of those afterwards, then ultra low latency is disabled. So if you want to use it for gaming, which of course, you know, it's kind of why we're looking at it really, then you need to get the projector positioned exactly how it needs to be for a nice flat image on the screen Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to adjust anything without losing your ultra low latency, which is a bit irritating. So that's in the advanced menu. And you've got the system settings, language. This is also a bit irritating, projector position. Front table, rear table, rear ceiling, front ceiling. It isn't really suitable for ceiling mounting. And you can't put it on like a tripod. Um, because of the angle it's projecting at from the projector. It's too steep an angle, and I'll go into this in the part of the review where I'm sitting at the table face to face with you, showing it to you. But anyway, that's all the options um, from the information right the way back to the very first one, which is display. Now for the nighttime footage. The room is completely black as it is outside also. The only sources of light in here are the projector and my television on the left-hand side there. Obviously the TV still looks brighter. And this is the thing, um, you know, the claimed brightness of this projector, I mean, it, it is bright, but it's not super bright. And I mean, you could turn the brightness up, but then you wash out the image. So it's, this is kind of like a balance uh, to get it as best as I can. Um, and the thing about, you know, 
using this at night time, even the cheapest of projectors, when in a properly darkened room, are watchable. You know, even those cheapy 150 pound ones that I've reviewed before actually look half decent, you know, when the lights go down and things are properly dark. So just like with those, this one here, now it's in darkness, perfectly watchable. No issue with it whatsoever. I would say the clarity of this is definitely better than the cheaper ones that I've reviewed before, the sort of edge to edge clarity. Often we get focus in the middle on these cheaper ones and then the, the you know, closer you get to the edges, the more blurry it is. That's still the case with this one, but far less so, I would say. But yeah, when, we, you know, when we've got them side by side here in the dark, the experience is, is perfectly acceptable. Again, it isn't the sort of experience you get on a four or 5,000 pound projector, but I would say it's definitely better than what you get on a sort of 150, 200 pound projector, particularly, you know, if the resolution genuinely is 4K, um, and I'll talk about that in a different segment. I think, I think perhaps it is, having looked at some comparisons, but I'll explain that in another part of the video. So, yeah, these are the same clips we see earlier. As far as things like colour, it looks, I mean, I'm colourblind, so I'm not the one to comment accurately on colour, but they look pretty close to what I'm seeing on my television. Um, and my TV was, was calibrated by someone who isn't colourblind, obviously. Be a bit silly if I did it. But, um, you know, the camera will pick up as best as it can. But to my eyes, at least the colours look fairly close. We've got a difference in what I'm going to call the blacks, because the black for the projector is a white wall, and the black for my TV is, of course, a backlit LCD panel. So they're completely different. Let's move on to the next one. But yeah, I, I, was, I still think out of the projectors I've tested, this one is probably the best, especially if we sort of factor in the, the good audio that comes with this and the quiet cooling solution they've used. Be interesting, I might actually turn the TV off in a minute just to see. In fact, what I'll do is I'll turn the TV off when I put some a set of Corsa on and then we'll see how much, if at all, better it looks without the light coming from the TV, obviously sort of bleeding into the, the projector, what we see on screen there. And then here's that Street Fighter 6 content again. You know, looking at it on my, on my camera here, the TV is obviously going to win. It's always going to win any self-lit source is going to be better than a projector but if you didn't have it side by side i think i'd be quite happy with the image that i've got on the right and weirdly i'm sure this street fighter clip was playing choppy earlier and now it doesn't seem to be i have no clue why that was but this looks smoother and how it should do but it's a good example here of you know bright colors and lights on screen with darker images as well and of course this does say it supports hdr the computer recognizes it as an HDR projector. So we should have, you know, reasonable contrast, brightness, and the blacks, of course, are determined by what we project onto. But yeah, that's, that's the clips from earlier. I'm now gonna put some Assetto Corsa on and we'll turn the TV off so we get solely the experience of using the projector. So what I've done now is move the camera over to the right-hand side so it is square on the projector image, um, but I've left it a little way back because I want you to see how much light is thrown around the room above, below, and to the sides. And of course you can see, if you look to the left, the TV is off as well. So this is now the only source of light in the room. Perfect scenario, your walls would be black, your ceilings would be black, your carpets would be black. You know, picture a cinema environment, basically. Um, I have light gray carpets and all my walls and my ceiling are also white. In case you're wondering why my driving looks erratic, I'm having to use my wireless keyboard because for some reason, the Xbox controller doesn't want to map properly. I have no idea why. 
Um, and obviously I can't really set up a sim rig in this situation um, for reasons I'll explain a bit later as well. I mean, apart from the fact that it's an awful lot of work to build a rig and install it here just to try out one projector. You know, what we're looking at here is image quality, input latency, um, clarity, colors, brightness, things like that. And the overall sort of uh, usability of the, of the projector itself as well. So it's not important how I'm driving, is it? But this is a sort of experience you would get visually using this P1000 for sim racing. And again, if you have no other way of getting a large screen experience, or maybe you're building you know, a relatively budget uh, home theater room or, uh, or games slash home theater room, you might be considering something like this for your source of imagery. Because if you're building such a room, a games room, home theater room, you're gonna have curtains over the windows, blackout curtains, and your walls, ceiling, and carpets are gonna be a dark color appropriate for use with a projector so that you can do this anytime, night or day, and not have to worry about what's going on outside. This is a very strange experience. I don't recommend using a wireless keyboard and mouse combination for sim racing, but you know, you get to see what it looks like. And I think it looks, again, pretty decent. This projector is definitely the sharpest of all the projectors I've tested so far, the rest you know, all 1080p and that sort of blurry, um, you know, edge, edge clarity is definitely a thing. Also, when we were on the white Google page earlier, I forgot to mention the uniformity of the color across the display was the best I've seen as well. Bearing in mind, I've only tested budget projectors, um, not high-end ones. So that Google page, to my eyes at least, looked white from edge to edge. It wasn't yellow, it wasn't green, it wasn't blue. You know, it looked, um, whatever color it was, uh, off-white, it was at least uniform across the whole screen, the whole display. Anyway, that's a little bit of sim racing and what you could expect if you used this projector as best as can be represented on camera. You know, your eyes aren't seeing what, what my eyes are seeing and you're watching it on whatever you're watching it on, which will affect the way it all looks, even down to things like the color profile. You know, if you're on a mobile phone versus a calibrated TV, it's all gonna look very different. So what I can tell you is it looks sharp and the colors look well balanced. If a little, maybe a tiny bit muted, but I've not tweaked anything. You know, I could bump the color up and bring those colors a little bit more to life if I wanted to. Everything is set on the default sort of gaming profile that it has. Anyway, I think that's everything we need to do from a demonstration point of view. I will now pass you back to myself, sat at the desk, to finish off the rest of this video. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration of the audio now. Again, this isn't ideal because I'm recording it through a lapel mic. And you're gonna be watching it back on maybe a mobile phone, tablet, laptop, possibly at TV speakers. I don't think there's gonna be that many of you listening to it through you know, an audio system that has really good dynamic range. Uh, but for those of you that are, I'll put the microphone you know, 12 inches from the speaker. I'll just turn the volume up to something sensible whereby I don't think it's gonna clip the mic. And you'll hear at least the clarity of the audio coming out because it is nice and clear. The, the high is clear, the mid is clear. I would say the bass is what's lacking the most. That probably rolls off somewhere between 80 and 100 Hertz. So it doesn't go very low, but have a little listen. Now, the other thing I'm gonna do is just mute the sound completely and let you have a little listen to the fan because fans in projectors can, can often be very, very loud in these cheaper ones and distracting from the audio. This one I'm gonna say is actually probably the quietest I've heard. It actually has a silent mode where it makes it even quieter by what I believe is turning one of the fans off. So if you're not in a situation where you're in a super hot environment, you might be able to get away with that 
Um, I've been using it in that silent mode the entire time to see whether I'll get an overheat warning or something would change as a result of it and I've not had any problems. Temperature in my room currently 19 degrees for reference. You know, maybe if you're somewhere that's 35 degrees, you, you couldn't run it in silent mode. But have a listen now. I'll put the mic again about 12 inches from the projector. You can have a listen. And I'll also speak, so you've got a comparison of my voice at my usual distance from the lapel mic and the fans in it. I say it's pretty quiet. Certainly not enough to be distracting when using the built-in audio, if that's how you chose to do it. See you there, here you go. Little demonstration of the audio. And then we'll move on to the next segment. Right, so there you go. You've got to see what it's like in the daytime, what it's like of a nighttime, and the menus, and actually you'll have got to have heard the audio quality, again recorded through a lapel mic for what it's worth, and you'll have heard the sound of the fans. Now, at the time of me recording this section, I haven't yet worked out the latency with the ultra latency mode off. So, I will come back in a section perhaps, in a minute where I show you the latency in non ultra low latency mode just so we can compare it to the 10 milliseconds of low latency mode because low latency mode as you saw in the clips there when I turn it on you can't then make any keystone adjustments which means this has to be sat perfectly to get your image exactly right you can't be a little bit back you can't be a little bit to the side it's got to be perfect level exactly the right angle and this is where we run into some of the drawbacks of this projector um, we'll do a quick close-up of it first of all you can see um, the output there from the from the lens and you can see your various inputs on the side here so you've got a, a usb for service that would be perhaps uh, firmware update via USB. You've got your HDMI input, USB-C, USB-A, and at the bottom here you've got your power supply input. These are on the side and not the back, which is unusual. Most projectors I've seen have them on the back. On the top, we have a power on and off button, a volume up and down, and a pause play button as well. On the underside, it's a nice clear bit. I do like the way it looks, clear base, and there is a sort of tripod mount there now this is and some rubber feet this is interesting that tripod mount and again this is where we get some of the drawbacks they describe this as a short throw projector but it isn't really a short throw projector short throw projectors can be as close as you know 30 30 to 40 centimeters and project up onto the wall they very much would sit on a tv unit um, you know, below where you would have a TV, maybe where you've got a soundbar, for example. You cannot do that with this. If you did, you would have a screen about yay big. I was projecting to 86 inches, as you see in the footage, and this was at least a metre and a half away from the wall to be able to do that. And if you wanted to project bigger, you know, 100 inches, 150 inches, this is getting back to a similar distance almost to what one of these cheaper ones would be it's not quite as far back you know it is definitely closer but this causes problems because if you want to use it say as a gaming projector it can't be mounted on a tripod at say just above my head height and project out onto the wall it projects up at an angle you know sort of 45 degrees because the very first thing I did when I got this not reading the spiel on the website was I put it on the tripod that I test all my projectors on at the usual height turned it on and half the image was on the ceiling and half the image was on the wall and I'm like what's going on there why is it why is it pointing up I thought maybe the lens had got knocked in transit or something like this and I looked and I'm like oh no it says it's short throw so I, I then took it off the tripod and say on my little sort of footrest in the front room, which is about, I don't know, 40 centimetres off the floor, and that's where it sits for the testing you've seen in this video. And that puts it in a really awkward place, 
because you can't sit in front of it because you'll be in the way because it literally sits like, you know, below waist height. Whereas normally on a tripod behind my head, projectile 150 inches, 100 inches, 200 inches, whatever it is I want to do from outside or inside. Uh, I did go up to 300 odd inches on the side of a white building once testing one of these, playing some Need for Speed Underground and some Street Fighter. And the projector would sit behind me and we, me and my friends were seated like you would do if you're watching a film. And the projector sits just above head level um, and you can put it that way wherever you want. It can sit between seats if necessary to get the exact size you want and, and distance you need. You can't with this. It has to stay in front of you. But it's not so short throw that you can have it, you know, close. If you want it at 200 inches or 150 inches, it's got to come back a fair way, which means you've got to come back behind it, effectively making the screen smaller. Because if you try and sit in front of it, you'll block the projector. Uh, and obviously that's not going to work. Now, the only options it has for sort of operational positions is what they call table, which is how I used it, or ceiling. Now, the tripod mount, you couldn't use on a tripod unless it was a tripod that only sat that high off the ground, of course, uh, in which case you may as well just set it on an object. Uh, or maybe you could have a ceiling mounted, um, not tripod, but you know what I mean, that uses that fitting and have it that way. But the issue with that is still the same. If you have it close to the ceiling, because when I sat this on the floor, my image was way too low. It had to come up like, you know, 40 odd centimeters. So if you've got it hanging from the ceiling and your ceiling is a little bit high, or even if it's not, the image you're gonna be looking at is gonna be really high. And then if you come back too far, it's gonna start encroaching on the ceiling itself. So I would have preferred it to not have short throw, because it really isn't short throw when we talk about proper short throw projectors. I would rather it just projected straight like a normal projector. And that would allow, you know, the fitting on the ceiling for it to then just point gently downwards. And just like with this mounting on a, on a tripod or a tripod with a platform, unscrewing the little leg at the front just to tilt it up, you know, if necessary. You don't have any of that adjustment with this. There is no Think nothing to adjust the angle ever so slightly with. Um, and when you want to get it in just the right spot, if that is critical to you, you can't. You're limited by whatever object you've sat it on or how far you've got it dangling from the ceiling. You don't want it dangling 40 centimetres from the ceiling in your, in your room. I mean, it's an option and it would work if it was a dedicated cinema room or games room, perhaps. It wouldn't be too much of an issue. But I just thought if you're going to do short throw, do short throw. And typically short throw projectors are laser projectors and they use ambient light rejecting screens as well. So it's like a half in half. It definitely can sit closer, you know, than a traditional projector. But I find that a little awkward and make things a little tricky to use. It also comes with this handle as if it's designed to be portable. There isn't a battery in it. It doesn't run off of batteries. Um, I mean, the handle works just fine, but I guess maybe if you were, you know, taking it outside to do an outdoor cinema type scenario or on a camping trip, if you've got some sort of screen that you could bring with you, you might find the handle useful for when you take it out of your vehicle and take it over to sit it on a block of wood or whatever it might be that you sit it on. But it's a tricky one to recommend. I mean, the price, for performance, puts it above cheaper projectors, um, but definitely lower than the expensive sort of four grand, pardon me, projectors. The image quality is definitely good, and I'm more than happy with that. The input latency is definitely good from a gaming point of view. And again, if it's aimed at gamers, do gamers typically take projectors out and about, the handle, etc. Um, or would they prefer a more, you know, permanent install that can be put on the ceiling traditionally or, or whatever else? You know, because again, this sort of boxy design, it allows for a decent sound system, which is nice, um, but not so flush to a ceiling if you were to mount it on a ceiling. I, I mean, it's a nice little projector. I, I don't know 
you know, if the, if the £1,500 price is justified, perhaps it could be a bit cheaper. And saying about being a bit cheaper, there is currently, on Amazon, I'm looking right now, there's a little box you can tick that says voucher, £300 voucher applied uh, to one item per checkout. So if I was to actually add that to my basket, do we get £300 off? Let's have a look. The other thing is they've told me as of the 18th of March, I'm not sure what date this video is going live, it was going to be up to 50% off on some projectors and they're giving me a link to put in the description for that as well. So yes, the current one there, current uh, voucher you can tick, does indeed take £300 off. So that brings it from 1500 to 1200 which is a much cheaper price. Still a £1,200 projector, but still not a four grand projector. You know, I, I'm not the most experienced with projectors. I'm not an expert by any means, but it's definitely a lot better than these cheaper ones that I have here. And I imagine if I spent five grand on a short throw laser projector, I would see a big step up from this. So perhaps it is priced accordingly for, for how it performs. Maybe let me know in the comments if you are more of a projector guru than what I am. Um, and this is, you know, great value, then, then by all means say so below. You know, thinking about it, it probably is in about the right spot considering um, its performance and its price versus the low-end competition and the high-end competition. And overall, my only gripe is the way you have to have it in a semi-short throw configuration. But maybe for other people, you might see that as a benefit. I don't know, it could be a personal you know, use case type thing. But to summarize, yes, it's ultra low latency. Yes, it's a nice, clear 4K image that supports HDR, recognized you know, in Windows, no issues there whatsoever. Um, uniformity when it comes to color and brightness across the image that is displayed. Um, and the colors to my eyes look pretty spot on compared to my calibrated television. To the, to the left in those demonstrations. I think that's probably everything we need to know about it. Things that came in the box, oh yeah, external power supply. A lot of projectors just have a two pin plug that goes in. This has an external power supply with a barrel plug. And obviously then for me, it came with, you know, a UK three pin plug there. The only other thing that was in the box was a USB-C lead uh, and a quick start guide, which didn't really tell you that much, but everything was there to get me up and running. The, the user interface is snappy. I, don't, I, I, I like it, I like the way it looks, and I like its performance. I just think it's a bit odd going with the semi-short throw configuration, and I'm not 100% convinced that 2300 ANSI lumens is exactly what this is putting out compared to the others, but that's pure speculation because I don't have any way to measure it. Anyway, there will be links in the description. Currently 1200 notes with a, a voucher that literally presents itself on the on Amazon, should you want to buy one. And then they are saying from the 18th, they're going to be doing up to 50% off of some projectors as well. So maybe whatever, today is the 14th. So this video should be up by then or before then. Uh, you, can, you can hang on and check and see what offers they're putting up you know, on the 18th, as they say they're going to. But as always, any questions in the comments, and thank you very much for watching. Take it easy.